Hi, I'm GMA Tank, and this is the Painting with Commentary video for the Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Umber Hulk, episode 35 of Paint to Life. So with this particular episode, I had decided to paint and wanted to include a wall that the Umber Hulk was breaking through their trademark move. So using some XPS foam, I took it and I needed to split it down the middle. So first thing is I cut a square to size. And because I don't have a cutter table, I use a ruler and my styro cutter to just use the ruler to go down straight and make a nice thin cut to cut the co whatever, uh, I guess that's half inch, so I cut it into quarter inch. Now I used a ruler and I measured off um, quarter inch brick sizes because I knew that I was going to have little teeny bricks to go along with the wall itself. So I cut a square to size that would fit on the circle and then I cut these guys to be individual bricks. As you can see, I'm sizing up the Umber Hulk. I've also used a knife and scored out a wall on the bottom of that XPS foam. So I set the Umber Hulk in front of him and use a Sharpie to dot all the places that I'm going to have to cut out and then using my X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut out the bricks that he is effectively bashed through. So, um, I thought maybe I could keep this as one piece, but as we'll see later, it will rip into two pieces. And again, um, I'm just using it to score out um, my bricks that the uh, Umber Hulk has smashed. And try to make them a little bit uh, oblong so they're not perfectly symmetrical. And uh, again, it's pretty straightforward. Now, he doesn't fit through there perfectly. I took a couple off the top. And I'll add them back later. Um, but again, it doesn't really have to fit through it. You can just set this on top of him like an arch. So now we're going to spray some nail polish remover. There's some acetone in there. And this is a great way to get a cool textured effect. Once it dries, it bubbles and cause pits. With some black craft paint now to basically prime this XPS foam, I'm putting it on here. And because that top is so thin and the paint will cause it to get wet and it will during this painting session it's actually going to break into two pieces but that's okay the main thing we're doing here is covering that pink xps foam and we don't use our expensive paints for that just black craft paint will work fine um, i've seen some guys like uh, black magic craft uses mod podge that's dyed black and i've never tried that i think i might next time i might pick some up mod podge because it kind of coats it as well so now i'm gluing it to the base with some uh, super glue and you can see my milliput there so now I'm going to mix the two pieces of milliput together it was a little discolored because that was the end of my roll because in my mind the one side of this wall was going to be like a desert environment or dirt and the other side would be dungeon so I wanted to build up the one side to look like earth or dirt or sand or whatever you have so as you can see it milliput is like my go-to for this you can sculpt nice hills, you put a little bit of water on your hand to get a nice little smooth smoothing effect. I'm going to sculpt up some elevation. I'm going to add some on top to look like little piles of sand where it's literally like resting on the wall where the Umber Hulk smashed through. And then I'm going to push some across to the other side of the base to look like the sand is kind of spilt into the dungeon itself. Just thinking about when I did this, yeah, I mean, just have fun with it. There's no right or wrong way to do it, but milliput definitely a fun thing to make bases with. You can see I just put some water on my finger there to spread it out, smooth it out. I also can use a dry paper towel to press down on this to kind of get a nice textured powder so it's not so smooth. But ultimately, I'm going to paint over this with some Citadel Technical paint, uh, Agros. Uh, I can't remember the paint I use. It'll come up later, and when I do that. So yeah, here I am using my texture of this to put some creases in there. But it's a completely unnecessary step because ultimately it's just going to get covered by the technical paint that I'm going to use to build up some sand-like grit. So yeah, I squeeze my Umber Hulk, his ass fits in there nicely. Perfect. All right, so now all those little teeny bricks that I cut out at the beginning, I put them in my bowl and stir them around in my black craft paint. Kind of looks like chunk when it's done here's some fun good boy eat your cereals <laughs> now that i've got those primed i'm going to glue them into place in the wall itself and i'm trying to emulate so i've cut out these little areas and these things fit just nicely so a little dab of super glue 
and I'm trying to get the effect that these bricks are flying out of the wall that the Elmer Hulk is smashing through. So again, try not to make them too symmetrical. You don't want all of them to be on a 45 degree angle open and all of them to be 45 degree angle open on the other side. So some I made, see like this guy, he's in the same direction as the other ones. Oh, and by the way, I glue, glued the top of the XPS foam back together since it ripped during the priming process. So anytime you're using super glue with XPS foam, just set it in there and hold it until it dries because uh, it can sometimes melt through the foam. So you don't want to uh, let it sag because then it'll shrink and melt and then you'll have a, a gap. So I press and I hold it tight. Again, I keep checking my umber hulk for space. I haven't painted him yet, but I don't want to go to put him in later and find he doesn't fit anymore. But he's good, so I'm going to place all these bricks. Not too many though, because I still have to paint this and I don't want to have to paint a bunch of little bricks later that didn't make this cut. So, that's looking pretty sharp. Looks like a busted up wall. Let's move on. So on the one side, Astro Granite. This is the dungeon side. I wanted to do a gray dungeon floor. So I'm going to use Astro Granite to put down there around the brick on the base. I'm going somewhat onto the milliput at this point. Fun fact that milliput is actually not even dry yet. I was doing all this in one night. I was really behind on this episode. I started Wednesday afternoon, you can imagine. So Paint to Life episode 35 started Wednesday afternoon and I got it finished for Saturday at five. Armageddon dust, again, it's going onto a wet milliput, but that's okay, because it will dry hard. And, uh, and it's not super wet. I mean, it's been drying for maybe an hour, but it's not like it cured overnight. So, oh, big gun, sorry, I'm tired. Okay. So now we have our inside and our outside. The astral granite for the inside of the dungeon and this, um, whatever paint this was, for the, this, and you could paint the milliput, especially because I textured it with my paper towel. You can make your own textures, your own sand, and then paint it to, to color, but this particular technical paint, it's got sand in it, it's got grit, it's the color of the dirt that I wanted anyways, so I'm saving myself three steps by just going straight there. And notice how I paint out onto the astral granite as well, a little bit further because this is supposed to be sand that's like poured into the dungeon when this umber hulk smashed the wall open. So don't be afraid to be liberal on it. And I'm playing with the wet paste to make cool effects. Oh, Merman Hyde Lord. Oh, what? Oh my god. You think I would rewind back and record over that again, but I'm not gonna because that was funny. Vermin Lord Hyde dry brushing. Now it's a little intense with my dry brushing here. It's not nearly as um, dry brush as you would like. I mean, there's some straight up red streaks on there because I had so much paint on my brush and it didn't dry it all off. I did some on the back as well after I did a Zandari dust just to keep the bricks to look the same. But I did that on purpose. I didn't want it to be like a red brick wall. On the back side, we're doing the same thing. Gold fag brown onto the sand to behind the door. I always do this with gold fag brown. See Eldar Frat flashes next because I put it on there and it turns it so damn orange. You know, if I wasn't such a Citadel whore and had more paints, I probably wouldn't use it as much as I do. Look how orange that looks. So I use the Eldar Flesh, which you haven't seen. It wasn't on camera. Uh, Basculanium Gray is a contrast paint. I'm putting on the Astro Granite to give it more of a black kind of feel. The Eldar Flesh Gray uh, Dry Brush. The Eldar Flesh Dry Brush on top of that sand you're going to see in the finished product. Um, because it needed to bring back some of the, the light. Okay, that's my last John, I promise. Boy, what a terrible showman I am. Okay. Deathclaw Brown is the color I'm going to paint the Umber Hulk. It's the first layer. I painted the Umber Hulk with four colors. Deathclaw Brown, Orn, Tau, well, they'll come up. But Death, Deathclaw, Death, Deathclaw Brown was the very first one. It's the base coat. It dries almost like a light brown, kind of orangey. Um, you know, it's funny, I did read as I was doing research for my episode that Umber Hulk gets his name for Umber, like the dark color. Ironically, <laughs> the Monster's Manual has pictures of it looking like a bit of a brown lobster. And I usually paint to what the Monster's Manual looked like. 
So here I am painting my own brown lobster. But in retrospect, a black, gray, umber hulk would have been cool too. But you know, I painted some things black and gray. I did the Nightmare, I did the uh, Headless Horseman, and the Behold Relic. Like, it's just a lot of those things. This was a fun color to use. I didn't always use it. Another thing with this particular model, there are all kinds of really cool details in it. Pits and cracks in the chitin in its armor. Uh, great for a wash, and we'll see that come to light pretty soon. I think the next step here is going to be our shade. Ha! I yawned again, but this time I edited it out. Um, another thing to interest that you guys might find interesting, this shade is going to be a Reikland Flesh, a Reikland Flesh shade. It's not a contrast paint, it's just a shade, but it's got a little bit more orange and brown to it than like an Agrax Earth, which is more brown and black. And I did that because I wanted to pull some of the orange out of the um, Umber Hulk itself for the final color. Also, in this case, I would start with a base coat, then do a shade to pull out all those little um, details, and then layer up from there. Sometimes I do base coat, layer, and then shade the whole thing at the end. But I wanted this guy to take that base coat of paint, which I did, and now add this shade, which brings out all those little pits and, and cracks and holes. And now I'm putting Tau Light Ochre as this layer color. Now this is a little bit of wet blending, and you guys know I'm not the best painter out there. I paint table ready stuff tell a story and I was not very comfortable doing this I mean I felt like I was blocking it out you see that it's maybe not the way light is supposed to work it should be the opposite where there should be a, a high shiny point in the center of that back and not and not have those um, darker areas be the center points but as I worked through it and painted it on I didn't mind it, it the paints dry like it looks pretty stark there but it dries somewhat transparent and blends nicely and having those pitted it almost look like a lobster shell you know I put this light line I'm basically outlining it with light and uh, the next two colors are gonna get lighter and lighter still and that's okay I'm gonna keep growing this kind of outline so again it's wet on wet these like plates on his arm gonna hit the top and sides with the light color leave the bottom same with under these giant like crab like fisticuff things he has chitinous like, boxing gloves on the other side it looks pretty spooky it looks like a troglodyte or something it's got all these little like, look at them if I ever flip the damn thing over it just looks really creepy so I kept all the light, lighter colors to the top and to the sides of the creature. Yeah. Again, outlining the fingertips, each individual finger bone. These gauntlet pad things, a little bit more, maybe too much. I'm like, ah, I'll just go over all of it. That's okay. His head, his shoulders, his cheeks. It's all getting a little splash of layering and the layering is what brings out the different color tones and uh, I think it looks pretty sharp. So after this Tauker, we're going to go into another color, Ungor Flesh. You can see as I paint the guy, the top and his back, which I started with, is now already dry. In fact, I'm holding it right on top of there. Fun fact, well, before we're talking about this, see, I've broken him off of his base. I do that quite a bit. I make almost little dioramas with these stories, and those bubble gum, I call them chewed gum, that they're sitting on, they just don't work. They are great for tabletop, or if it's just the mini you're painting, but uh, when you're trying to put on a diorama, you get this giant, piece of bubble gum under his ass and then you have to build the diorama or build the ground up to flush with it so it doesn't look like he's floating on top of the terrain so by breaking him off as I did here I get a full whatever I want so here's the Angor flesh you can see I'm just going over the edges on the top and the highest levels I don't want to get down to the nooks okay can go around there tickly but again I'm just putting it on the very edge of these 
high spots. I don't want it to go over things I have already painted or things I'm planning on painting. So. Yeah. I'm, I'd like to take my painting up a couple notches, but it's hard to do with these episodes taking as long as they do. Um, you know, people might paint this and spend days on it. I did it in four hours. You know, so I feel like I'm kind of restricted in my growth if I'm constantly rushing through these things to make my deadlines. And then if I was to skip a deadline to get it, give myself more time, then not only would I feel bad, but I still wouldn't be at the end uh, to the same level as the rest of the beautiful artists out there. So I've got Saruman, uh White, not Saruman white for the eyes and then black for the eyes as well the confusion eyes will be black and then the big dark vision eyes will be white i know in the source material they're kind of orange but i like the idea of a creature from the underworld having like solid white eyes with no people just being completely taken aback by having no light whatsoever in their environments I think this is looking pretty sharp, guys, as it's drying there. I've got a Morgas Bone, which is a base paint from Citadel I'm using for the um, the mandibles, and then a Pop Apothecary White, which is a contrast paint to go over said mandibles. I didn't want them to be bone. It's too much like the other browns. So I threw a white on there just to kind of give them not the same look as a beige. I was trying to give another color. Something that would work well with the white eyes. Okay. So this guy is almost done, guys. All those layers have dried now and they're blended nicely. Um, for his fingernails, I took Death Crown, Crown, Death, whatever brown, Death Claw brown, mixed it with some black to get a darker version for the toenails and the claws. Also a little bit of dab of a gloss varnish for his eyes, and that's it. Time to glue the umber hook in place and use those little teeny bricks that were my cereals to glue on top of his hands and on his head to make it look like he's busting out action style. So there's the finished copy, very cool. All those bricks are glued into place, some tufts in the background there. The uh, ceramite white on his uh, mandibles instead of looking traditional bone. Another side view of the busted wall and the Umber Hulk coming in to destroy things. Uh, what else do we have here? The backside. This kind of gives you a good indicator of how big he is coming through that wall. And again, with those bricks that I glued in place from earlier, looking very nice. Another angle of the side. Don't be afraid to glue some bricks to the model itself. You can see the two on his arms. It just gives it some realism. It's not going to hurt anything. And here's Gavin Knight from episode 34 in front of the Umber Hulk for a sense of scale. Anyways, as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below or on an email at paintthelife.com. Uh, and I will get back to you with the answers. I am GMA Tank. I hope you like this uh, little look at how I made this. And um, yeah, please like, subscribe, and share my channel to help us grow. Thanks a lot. Talk to you next time. Wash your hand, people.